Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to speak on the Scrap Metal Industry Bill 2016, which has been designed to provide regulation for the scrap metal industry through the installation of appropriate prohibitions, reg registration requirements and other regulatory uh, measures to provide greater transparency, accountability and oversight for the industry. This is because the scrap metal industry has to date been largely unregulated, making it an extremely attractive avenue for criminals to make quick cash. The industry operates largely by a cash for scrap scheme, purchasing all manners of metal objects with little oversight by any authorities, and there are claims that this has fuelled vandalism and theft across the state. While I am in support of the intention of this bill to reduce crime, as Shadow Minister for Small Business, I must note that, there, that here again we see the government increasing regulation in an industry on the back of a history of very little oversight, seeking to increase the cost burden on businesses with very little <coughs> impact, perhaps, on reducing crime. Despite this government's mantra that they are the record deregulators, with five off for every one on, which I know has been watered down to two off for one on in recent times, uh, the Auditor General has recently called the government to account in their report which shows that they have not been the deregulators that they claim. In fact, the Auditor General stated that in 2015 <coughs> the government reported that its red tape reduction initiatives implemented between 2011 and 15 had resulted in nearly $900 million in savings. But while these initiatives resulted in some savings, the total value of savings is unknown because <coughs> estimates for some initiatives were based on unverified assumptions, cost transfers or unrealised projections. In the absence of an accurate red tape savings figure and a stock take of regulation, the New South Wales Government does not have a clear view of what impact its reported red tape savings has had on the overall net burden of red tape in New South Wales. The Auditor General uh, continued to say the one-on, two-off initiative to reduce <coughs> the regulatory burden achieved its numerical target with approximately four legislative instruments removed for each one added. However, in cost terms, the value of total legislative burden increased by 16.1 million over the same period despite a reduction in legislative instruments. And if you speak to any small business, I think you'll find that they'd much prefer to have five easy pieces of legislation to incorporate into their business practice models than one complex piece. The Auditor Auditor General said that the audit found there is no effective central oversight of whether red tape reduction principles are being applied by departments to prevent and reduce red tape. And on the back of that, the Auditor General made several recommendations, including that the Department of Premier and Cabinet set a framework for reducing red tape, re-establish a program of targeted reductions of unnecessary regulations, taking a transparent approach by starting with a comprehensive stock take of regulatory burden so that progress can be accurately tracked and reported, and that the Department build on past work with targeted reviews of areas with more red tape and better monitor performance against better regulation principles, <coughs> and that clearer processes and responsibilities be established to improve the quality of regulatory assessments. Now, I talk about all of these issues in regards to the Auditor General's report because small business in this state is suffering under a lot of regulation and despite the government's claim, it is clear from the Auditor General's report and from my consultation with businesses on the ground that there is no effective strategy to reduce red tape and here again we see more coming on. Now let me turn to some of that red tape, some of the regulations that this bill will create which will be an imposition on good operators within the industry. The bill proposes that scrap metal businesses will be required to register and nominate a manager of each scrap metal yard used by the dealer as a point of contact. Any changes in registration information must be reported within 14 days of being amended, otherwise the business may face penalty. There are also prescriptions that a scrap metal dealer can't buy any goods with cash, cheque, payable to cash or in kind with goods or services. And if they suspect that any scrap metal in their possession or any scrap metal sold to the dealer may have been stolen or unlawfully obtained, they have a duty to inform the police officer of the, suspic of the suspicion. And that is obviously a good thing. They must now keep transaction records, which contains the date of the transaction, the details of the person who sold them the scrap metal, a description of the scrap metal and whether the scrap consists of a motor vehicle and the method of payment, and that these records must be retained for a period of at least three years. Should they not be registered while carrying out scrap metal operations or there's reasonable suspicion that a serious criminal offence is being committed at the premises, the New South Wales Police Commissioner may make an interim order that the premises be closed and the lo local court may on application from the Commissioner order the long-term closure of the premises for the reasons above. So on the basis of a reasonable suspicion, 
we can have a long-term closure of a, of a business. Um, police officers may at any reasonable time enter any premises which is a business is a business dealing with scrap metal for the purpose of compliance inspections. However, they do not have power to enter a premises that is used only for residential purposes without the permission of the occupier or the authority of a warrant. Now, Labor has consulted with the scrap metal industry on this legislation and the Australian Metal Recycling Industry Association are supportive of moves which will assist in the reduction of crime. But they also noted the absence of any consultation from the government prior to the introduction of this legislation. And their opinion is that without rigor rigorous regime of business <coughs> inspections, audits and prosecutions, the introduction of the proposed bill on its own will have no real effect in reducing the crime rate. I met with the Small Business Commissioner of New South Wales uh, earlier this week and staff from the Minister's office on a range of issues relating to business. And this very issue around a lack of consultation with industry prior to the introduction of legislation, which will have an increasing legislative burden and, and compliance burden for those businesses, was an issue that was very uh, strongly made by myself, a point that was made by myself. Um, I am concerned that we see in so many industries a raising of the bar for good operators and without enforcement and compliance action to undertake, underpin that legislation to be really strongly ensuring that it is adhered to by all in an industry, we see that the good operators have just increased their cost burden by you know, having to keep better records, all that sort of thing, while at the same time those who are engaging in illegal or criminal conduct are able to sail through because the enforcement is not there. Um, I am also concerned about how government can help. You know, it would be interesting to see, as we've seen in other industries over time with, the, with successive governments, that where a new industry regulation model is put forward, a model paperwork or model system is established. I mean, we're talking about people who work in the scrap metal industry. These are not people who necessarily have high levels of financial or uh, or even uh, English literacy to be able to implement and start from scratch a system to comply with regulations. So I would be really interested to see that the Minister for Small Business could offer some assistance to the industry to help them actually undertake the uh, increasing burden of regulation that they will have to deal with on this. And of course that enforcement and uh, compliance action must be consistently applied, particularly when we're seeing that just with a reasonable suspicion of criminal activity we can have the short term or even by court order the long term closure of a business. Now I think that we need to also um, get away necessarily from the, con the idea that a cash business is necessarily operating for nefarious purposes. Often those industries are operating that space because it suits their model of being able to provide quick and easy access to consumers who want to purchase a product. There may be low levels of financial literacy and if you're dealing in an operation which hasn't had a strong history of dealing with banks in terms of having to raise significant loans, etc., you may not actually have a lot of access to things like FPOS which do create their own paper trail which would remove some of the barriers to them. I really want to emphasise this numbers game in terms of regulation. We cannot have a situation where small businesses are burdened with the yoke of regulation to do the government's work for them. It is the government's job to find criminals and yes, businesses need to participate as all members of the community in reducing crime and particularly where we have identified that there is an issue in a particular industry that it makes it easier for criminals to participate. But to go back to my previous point, one complex piece of legislation does not equal five simple, e easy to administer and easy to comply with regulations. So I want to make sure that the government takes its obligations to small business, who are the engine room of our state, to actually help them through this regulatory burden. Having a consultation with the industry groups might have been a good step, but that boat's already sailed. So perhaps we can now see the small business minister start to intervene in this legislation in terms of the application, the rollout to small businesses to ensure that his constituency is not being disadvantaged by the state's desire to stop criminal activity. I support the bill but I do hope 
that the government takes seriously its need to work with small business in order to achieve the outcomes that it's stating it will do and that it works to ensure that the compliance and enforcement obligations are met so that it's not all for nothing for those businesses. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you.